installing MicroPython on an ESP32-S2 Mini by Wemo. So that is a mouthful. Maybe I should start calling it the S2, but it's the S2 Mini. I mean, how many adjectives can you throw on there? Uh, quite a few is the answer. So our setup requirements or dependencies that we're going to need for this project are uh, Python to be installed, um, for UPyCraft to be installed, and you're going to also need to download ESP Tool. This great random nerd tutorial shows you how to install UPyCraft, uh, the IDE, onto Windows. So what they mean by installation is pretty much prep your computer uh, to be able to use it. So uh, it goes through the instructions and shows you how to add Python to path. That is probably the most important thing about this. So that way you don't have to mess with uh, relative or non-relative directories inside of the command line. So we're going to stick this under the microscope. And you, you want to do is you want to press the zero button, which is in the non-chiseled outside. Click reset and then let go, and then let go of the zero button. And then if you look at it, uh, hold the zero button, short press the reset, and then uh, release the zero. That puts it into device firmware upgrade mode. Okay, let's get rid of that. So we have UPyCraft on here. If we go to tools and serial, we now see that it shows up as COM6. So um, it was COM10, now it's COM6. And if we try to, if I try to connect to this board, it's going to error out. I don't want to do that right now. I just want to see what COM port it is. And if I have a question, watch, I'm going to unplug this, and we should see COM6 go away. And it did. It's just, that's why I like UPyCraft so much, just for this little tool. So we're going to plug it back in, see that COM10 shows up, press and hold 0, reset, let go, let go, boom, COM, COM port 6. Now, like I said earlier, you're going to want to have the ESP tool installed. Rather, ESP tool is just a zip file that we're going to download from the web. What we're going to do is download and extract this, and then we're going to command line into it um, to actually run it just with Python um, from command prompt. So we go get ESP tool from the link, and then we are going to download the zip. And that will be inside of your downloads folder. Also, we want to get the firmware for the board. So that's the ESP32-S2 Mini Wemos. This link is also in the description. So here is the firmware. We're going to download the latest one. And make sure to download the right one. This one says C3. If you have the wrong one, it does give you an error, which is pretty nice. Anyways. So click on this, and you're going to want to extract ESP tool, let's say, into your downloads folder. And you're going to want to then put this firmware, this .bin file, in that same folder. And that's just because we're going to be using relative pass. It will save you some issues. If you want to put it in a different folder, you're going to have to specify the exact location of it. So if you're not familiar with command line, again, this is for tutorials for everyone. So if you're smarter than that, please forgive me. I'm not trying to talk too much. OK, so we download this 1.8 megabytes. OK, so now once we have that, we're going to open up command prompt. So in command prompt, uh, 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 in command prompt, and you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're going to make sure that we're in the ESP tool master. And we can type Python tag V, and it should tell us, you know, we're in Python. If uh, you can't do that in this directory, it means that um, you did not install Python to path. And if you didn't install Python to path, you're going to want to follow instructions online on how to do that. So flash firmware, it says to hold the zero button, blah, blah, blah. And then we have to use ESP tool. So this is, this is the command we're going to do. It's uh, ESP tool.py dash dash port, port name, erase flash. So let's do that. I'm going to lose all of my stuff that I had on MicroPython. So let's just type it in. So Python, and then we're going to type in esptool.py, tac tac port. And then on our instance, it's com6. We're going to do erase underscore flash. Ah, now this is great. So what you see is it says that uh, no module named serial. No module named serial. This is really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to import serial. Now, if we, is it pi serial or serial? I can never remember. So we're going to do python tag m pip install serial. 
So let's try that again. We'll run the same command, see if we can erase the flash. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's run ESP tool. Let's not install serial again. And it might say, import depends on pi serial. Ah, but there's a conflict. OK, so there's a, it needs pi serial and not serial. So the, the error that ESP tool gives you is it says, hey, there is no module named serial, when in fact, we should have installed pi serial. So Python, dacm pip uh, uninstall serial, is that it? Yes, OK, that's what we're supposed to do. And then we can do Python tag m pip install pi serial. So this should be what we want. Then we can go up twice. And now let's try to erase the flash. And it erases the flash. And hopefully you might see it, uh, you might see it light up over here. OK, that's good. I, don't, I, I couldn't tell if it, it blinked or not. So we're going to run the next command, which is ES, uh, first Python, Python. ESP tool dot pi tac tac port and then we're gonna do com six again and then we're gonna do the baud rate so baud one two three one two three so it's one million right underscore flash tag z now this is the address that we're writing um, the firmware two and then oh yeah ESP thirty two tab that's the C3 tab. Here, there's the S2. OK. The tab autofills and command prompt. So we have the right one. We have the right address. It's at a million. Let's go. Oh, COM6 does not exist. OK. We erase the flash. Let's take a look. It says COM6. Oh, but COM6 is here. This error can happen. OK. OK, it's, 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 it's seeing it again. OK. So. Let's try it again. There we go. So sometimes what you need to do is unplug it, plug it back in again, or hit the reset button. Usually you don't have to hit the reset button on the device. Um, but that's why UPyCraft is nice, because it shows you which COM port's there. Um, you can you know, look inside the device manager. But OK, so now it says it's loaded on the board. So we're going to manually hit reset based off of what this says on the command prompt, which is hitting the reset button. And then you would hear the ding and unding. Not sure if that captured. We're going to go back to UPyCraft. Um, now we're back to COM port 10. So if we click on it, it should have a REPL be REPLed in. So now we are. Sweet. So we can now print hello ESP32 S2 mini by Wemos. <laughs> and uh, let's kick the tires. OK, it printed. OK, now that we actually have MicroPython on the board and we were able to uh, REPL into it uh, through UPyCraft, now we can kick the tires. We did print Hello World. Um, let's make the LED flash. So we're going to need two things. We're going to need to import uh, time. Um, and then we're going to need to, from machine, um, import um, <clears throat> pin. Uh, alternatively, you can just say import machine. And then specify uh, machine.pin. But uh, for the sake of brevity, we're just going to uh, from machine import uh, pin, because that's all we're doing. So we're going to have LED equals um, pin, since we have it, uh, pin. And I think you have to specify the, the GPIO, which is 15. And then it's pin, pin out, pin out, pin out. I need to look at my code real quick. Let's open an example from machine. Yep, pin. Oh, it's it's pin 15 and then it's pin dot out. Pin dot out. Let me make sure I have that correct. Pin dot out. Okay, perfect. Let's hit save and run it. And when we hit the plus button in uh, UPyCraft, it's different than uh, CircuitPython. Um, when you press this button to any file that's on your screen, it pushes it. That's what UPyCraft will do. So um, if you make a change and you save it, it's fine. It's not going to instantly push onto the board like uh, CircuitPython does. You actually have to use REPL to uh, send the file over. And I believe it does it line for line. Same when you read it. So some errors can happen when you do it in that method. 
um, like computers always have errors. So if we type in LED, it shows us uh, that pin that LED is pin 15, which is neat. So we'll do LED.value and oh, so LED.value and we're going to set the value to one. Turns on LED.value um, back to zero. Turns the light off. Okay. So that functions, and if we type in dir, we can see what are the elements. Sys, bdev, time, name, os, my file, network. Uh, for i in range uh, 10, um, led.value 0, uh, time.sleep 0.2, led.value 1. And it will leave it on. I don't like that. Let's do one and then zero. And then time.sleep point three. Point four. Eh, whatever. Okay, so now it should blink some times. But I'm not connected to the board. So I'll go into tools, serial, connect again, and you can tell I connected by the Python terminal there. And boot up pi. I'm gonna push this onto the board. So oh, yeah, it blinked. Awesome and ended. Great. So let's type in dir. Ah, but this time should not appear did, but that's because it was on the board. And you'll find that the other variables are gone. So if the board is still plugged in and you're programming it, sometimes unplugging it and plugging it back in, you won't have that memory still sitting there. So um, not sure if that's going to be helpful, but it, it is. So it has been for me to actually physically unplug the board, plug it back into the computer, and then you won't have some of these persistence issues, at least with the ESP32 S2 Mini um, running MicroPython 1.19. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, there are more tutorials I will show on how to get the uh, ILLI 9341 display driver to work um, via SPI connection. Um, I also have the SSD 1306. Uh, those are pretty fun, but my favorite thing to do is to blink the LED, because at least you have some feedback to your code that you're running. And again, MicroPython is really, really helpful for just uh, research and development for the capability of devices. It usually is good to use a faster programming language, of course, depending on uh, what you need. But I love MicroPython. I love how easy it is um, to code, and it's relatively forgiving. But uh, yeah, this is just one example of an error. So we'll just do for i in range. So yes, I did skip a few parts, but more tutorials to come on the LE9341 board. Also the SSD1306, those are TFT screens and OLED screens. Um, they're pretty commonplace in the microcontroller world. Uh, again, please like, thumbs up, and get the bell icon. That helps me make better videos for you all. But it is what it is. So welcome to the wonderful world of MicroPython on microcontrollers. So a whole bunch of micros, a whole bunch of U symbols. Um, but I appreciate you watching this video. Please like or subscribe. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. And with that, uh, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you next tutorial.